Happy Christmas, everyone. Welcome to City Church. My name's Ben, and I'm one of the pastors. It's great to have you join us for this short service this morning. Nick, who's one of our elders, is going to be speaking shortly, but we're going to begin by worshiping God together. And I'm just going to pray to start us off. Lord Jesus, we join together to worship you now. We celebrate you as Prince of Peace and the Son of Righteousness. Please bring your light and your life to us. Draw our hearts together in worship now and meet with each one of us by your Holy Spirit. Amen. The herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconcile Joyful ye nations rise Join the triumph of the skies With the angels Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Christ by highest heaven adored. Thank you. 
It's fantastic to worship together, isn't it, and to sing carols. And I want to read you the prayer or the song of worship uh, of Mary that is recorded in Luke chapter 1. So I'm just going to read to you from verse 46. It says this, And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked on the humblest state of his servant. For behold, from, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me. And holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away 
empty. Think what an honor it was for Mary to be chosen by God out of all the billions of people who have ever lived to be Jesus' mum, to carry him, to care for him and nurture him. And so, uh, yeah, we echo those words, Lord. We magnify you today. We honor you. We thank you for sending Jesus for us. And we praise your holy name. Amen. Just a couple of things to share this morning by way of notices. The first thing to say is that there'll be a short service like this again next Sunday, the 3rd of January at 10 a.m. We'd love to have you uh, join us. And then just to say on Sunday, the 10th of January, we'll be opening the service for people to attend in person again. Um, And so booking will open on our website from Monday, the 4th Of January. So if you'd like to attend in person, then look out for that on our website uh, next week. I'm now going to hand over to Nick, who's going to speak to us. Well, Merry Christmas, everyone. My name's uh, Nick Todd, one of the elders here at City Church, based up in uh, Bradley Stoke. And uh, married to Sarah. We've got four kids Alex, Abby, Zach, and Emily, two at uni, two at home at school, secondary school. And uh, we've been in Bristol about 20 years, just over, about 23 years now. And uh, we're going to be looking this morning at uh, Colossians 3. So if you've got a Bible to hand, you might grab it if you want to. Uh, But before we get into the passage, I have a little activity I'd love you to do. I want you to go and get your favourite item of clothing. Now clearly... If you've got some clothes for Christmas and the person who bought those clothes for Christmas is sat with you now, you go and get that. Otherwise, just get your favourite item of clothing. And kids, if you've got some grown-ups with you where you're sat, if they're um, not really paying attention and they don't seem to want to get some clothes, they look a bit like they're not moving, you can tell them it's Christmas. It's Christmas, go on, go and get your favourite lucky socks or whatever it is. It's your favourite item of clothing. We'll see why we need it a bit later on. You can press pause, in fact. I'll stand here while you press pause, and then you can go and get your favourite item of clothing. Okay, so we've got our favourite item of clothing. Let's have a look at the passage. Why we've got that, clothing will become relevant a bit later on. So let's look at the passage. It says this. My Bible says, rules for holy living. So it says at the top. Yeah. So it says this. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. You die, for you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Let's just think about those first few verses for a second it says here since then you've been raised with Christ set your hearts on things above and then a bit later on it says set your minds on things above so it's a question for you where's your heart set and where's your mind set it's a question where's your heart where's your mind leading up to Christmas were there some presents under the tree were they under the tree so I'm going to take this tinsel off tickly so uncomfortable I don't recommend that as your favorite item of clothing anyway do you get some presents under the tree and some of you will you iron some of those presents up thinking oh that looks interesting that looks a good present I wonder what that is and when you when you had to open your presents did you how do you decide on the order of the presents that you're going to open which one do you save to the end is it the biggest one is it the heaviest one? Which one? Which one did you save till last on Christmas Day? A few years ago, when our kids were a lot younger, I bought the kids a present from an army surplus store. You can tell where this is going, can't you, already? An army surplus store. Kids, what are they going to want from there? Anyway, I was a bit desperate. I thought it would be good to get something. I was staying in York 
there was the hotel near the hotel was an army surplus store there wasn't any other shops anywhere near where i was so i thought there must be i guess something must be something in there i could get so anyway i go in and one of the things i find was a case like a box like a military box i think it had like grenades in it or something anyway it was a big green tin it was this i'll show you and i wrapped it up it's all in christmas paper it's really heavy this thing and I, you think why on earth did you get it? i got it from one of my abby our daughter i know you're thinking now why on earth would she want one of these she thought that as well um but i thought it would have been good for putting playstation games and dvds in and things like that so it's ideal they just go in there lovely all lined up in the case I, I didn't really think anything of it anyway when it was under the christmas tree it was heavy it was big she was very excited wondering what it was i said oh goodness me it's not that exciting but anyway got to christmas day she saved it till last and it's fair to say not impressed was not impressed with the grenade launcher green box it even had sand in it but no not impressed and heart was set on it and i wonder what's in there but my question is what's your heart set on what's it going to be set on this year where does your mind go when you're daydreaming where, where does your where, I mean, when it talks about our mind and our heart as well where does it go can i encourage you let's let our hearts start going for christ going for things above so rather than getting caught up with our presence what we got the latest technology if you're a technophile you know you love the iphones and the samsungs and the whatever else or maybe you're into clothes and having the latest clothes or whether it's cars and looking at auto trader whatever it might be the bible says let's set our hearts on things above things above let's do that so you up for that set our hearts on things above and our minds it then goes on the passage it goes on put to death therefore whatever belongs to your earthly nature sexual immorality purity lust evil desires and greed which is idolatry because of these the wrath of god is coming you used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived but now you must rid yourselves of all such things as these anger rage malice slander filthy language from your lips do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices and put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator it's amazing isn't it when you were baptized remember if you've been baptized well, you know, why do we do that it looks so weird doesn't it? let's be honest I remember with someone who wasn't a Christian and they talk about baptism you think, what on earth are they doing they're getting dunked in a bathtub type thing and then lifted out you think what is that all about you might have wondered that if you're not a Christian watching this video you might be wondering the same thing you do that we do do that you know, we baptize people and it's all about the death of the old self and the new life that comes in Christ and that's what this is talking about it's saying we've uh, uh, where is it going? we put on put on the new self being renewed because we've got the new self yeah. in Christ a new self we put on the new self being renewed in knowledge in the image of the creator but it does say in this passage that we're to we although we've been transformed and we have we are encouraged to then live like we're our new nature is designed to live so we rid ourselves of these things that we just read anger rage malice slander we put them off we take them off so there are things that we need to take off maybe some of these you need to take off you need to get rid of these things you've seen the list you've heard me read it you need to put those things off notice there's an encouragement for us to do something yeah they don't just fall off <laughs> we put them off we take them off what are you like at taking those things off yeah a lot of it is us individually doing that isn't it we take these things off but notice in the passage as well it's, it has a reference in verse 9 to how we are to live with one another too do not lie to each other since you've taken off your old self yeah, and put on the new self so we take off the old self with all its practices what are you like at taking that stuff off have you taken it off and then put some of it back on again so we take it off and then 
and we just get a bit lazy we put it back on the comfy old jacket if any of you got some really old clothes some of us who are a bit older we might have some older clothes you kids you can't put on your old clothes they don't fit do they you've grown out of them but when you get to a certain age they still fit but i've still got my leather jacket from when i was 18. i can put it on it's like it's like, a, it's like an old old friend i've been through all sorts of things in this leather jacket as a teenager and then at college and university and all those kind of things and you put it on i mean it's totally out of fashion now obviously but it just feels like yeah this is this is me this is like from my olden days as it were yeah but actually so is our sin and it's quite tempting to put on those old clothes isn't it because we're used to them we're comfortable in them but our new self when we came out of the water our new self doesn't want these old clothes we're encouraged to put them to death that's the terminology used here isn't it put to death therefore so we put we keep this old stuff off we keep off the old stuff we have to take it off but then it goes on in uh where's it gone I've just lost my place yeah so do not yes yeah, so we take off the old self and then it says put on the new self here there is no greek circumcised or uncircumcised barbarian scythian slave or free but in christ we are all one therefore as god's chosen people holy and clearly loved dearly loved clothe yourselves with and then we get a list of things we're to put on compassion kindness humility gentleness and patience what a list i don't know about does that describe you does that describe you in the morning you wake up and you are just oozing oozing with compassion kindness humility gentleness and patience is, is that you it just you, it just comes out of every pore i'm not sure it's anyone actually i'm not sure it is because otherwise if it was why would the passage encourage us to put the things on clothe yourselves there's an encouragement to us we are to clothes don't just land on you do they you put them on yeah so you have to put these things on that's what it says it says clothe yourselves so can i encourage let's do that I, it's good to do what the bible says isn't it out of those things there compassion kindness humility gentleness and patience are your clothes like that are you dressed like that that's the question because that's what we're encouraged to do yeah so you're looking at your favorite clothing you see where the clothing comes in now okay you're looking at you've got your favorite piece of clothing yeah just look at it and think i want this to be i want this to be patience i want this to be compassion i want this i want to be you know not seen in being on you know what i mean i want to be wearing compassion i want to be wearing patience that's what i want to be dressed in over years ago i preached on this same passage i did it in a tuxedo trying to illustrate so i can't remember why actually <laughs> but I, did. I was trying to illustrate something from the passage but you want to be wearing you know we want to be wearing these things yeah so let's then it goes on actually so we put these are things we put on individually aren't they but then just like before it also talks about how it affects our relationships with one another it says bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another forgive all or forgive sorry as the lord forgave you so as we're wearing these things we're then encouraged to bear with one another and forgive one another are you holding any grievances have, have there been any grievances in the year 2020 for you it's not been the best year has it for anyone but have there been any grievances that you're holding you're holding on to them someone said in whenever it was in march i still remember they said this they did that they did this the bible encourages us to forgive whatever grievances and we can't it doesn't give us the wiggle room to say oh yeah but you don't know what they said you don't know what they did if you knew if you knew what they did Papa doesn't give us any wiggle room for that it says whatever which i think means whatever <laughs> so forgive one another 
whatever grievances you have we're, we're encouraged to do it and obviously as we wear these clo- you know compassion kindness humility and so on humility just take that as a one-off we're humble we have that humility about us it's not all about us it's not the ego if somebody does says something they shouldn't have said maybe they should have said it and it was inappropriate they were angry they were annoyed whatever they said something let's show some humility we also say things don't we we get things wrong we screw up let's show some humility it's where humility and let's forgive one another we don't have to forget it doesn't say forgive and forget i mean the people say i don't forgive and forget it's a bit ridiculous you can't just forget um but we can forgive we can forgive and it then goes on at the end over all these virtues put on love over all these virtues put on love which binds them all together in perfect unity so your outer garment if you like is love a big jacket goes over the top it's love all the other things are there compassion forgiveness and so on and love sits over the top don't we want that this year to be like that even with the people in our own households in our bubbles have that love for one another that's what the bible encourages us to do and then it says let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since the members of one body you were called to peace and that word rule there it's like an umpire like a judge an umpire in a sporting event the same word so it's like the judge the arbiter of how we are together how we are with one another is Christ he's the arbiter yeah the peace of Christ rules in our hearts as members of one body you are called to peace And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all hymns, with sorry, with as you sing, with all wisdom, sorry, and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. So as we are together, we want Christ to Christ's word to dwell in us richly, don't we? As we sing together. And we're gonna do that actually just now. We're gonna worship this God who gives us these fantastic clothes to put on and encourages us to get rid of those old garments i'm just going to pray for us before we sing uh, together lord jesus we thank you that you have given us these garments to wear these wonderful clothes that we can put on lord we thank you for them lord jesus we thank you that they are there for us lord in christ lord i pray that you would you would dress us if you help us dress ourselves with compassion kindness humility gentleness and patience let us as city church be those who are really good at bearing with one another make us excellent at forgiving one another those of us who perhaps this year there's just been things that have happened help us draw a line forgive and move into 2021 as those wearing love for one another Lord Jesus so help us do it help us to get rid of those old clothes even though they feel so comfortable sometimes but actually help us just say no and take them off and throw them away and just live in the new clothes that you have given us so let's worship God together let's do what it says it says as you sing harm sims (laughs) sims whatever they're psalms hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your heart to God, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Let's do that together now as we worship in conclusion of our time together. This morning, we have an invitation to come before Jesus, to worship him, the one who took us out of a life of sin and death and brought us into new life in him. He is worthy of all we have, of every breath, of every song we are, because he is. Everything we are comes from him, flows from him brought us to life so let's worship him this morning the first born of all creation the world was made for your delight taking on our human nature becoming sin to give us life you hold us
That's all for today, except to say that I'll be hosting a Zoom straight after this service. Normally these happen each week, uh, hosted by our site leaders, but today uh, this Zoom is for the whole church. So anyone is welcome to join, uh, especially if you're on your own today or self-isolating, uh, I'd love to see you there. You can probably find the link uh, in an email that you will have been sent by the church. And finally, just to say that obviously Connect Groups are relaunching in January, and so don't forget to check on our website uh, in the next couple of weeks to look for a group that you might want to be part of this term. If I don't see you on Zoom in a moment, then have a great week, and I hope to see you soon.